In some previous episodes, we've talked about optimizing your processing to get the fastest, best results from your processing jobs. We've also talked about customizing your images to get just the evidence that needs to be reviewed. Today, we're gonna talk about optimizing your install to reduce the bottlenecks and make sure you're getting the most speed possible in this episode of FTK Feature Focus. Welcome to FTK Feature Focus. I'm Justin Tolman. I'm the director of training for Xtero. And this week we're talking about making sure that you are installing FTK in the best way possible. Just realize before we get started that vanilla FTK or the base FTK is really the only product that you, the end user, will install. If you go up to lab or up to enterprise, then typically the back end and a lot of this stuff will be pre-configured. You simply need to install the interface. All right, let's jump into it. We're gonna start with the evidence image drive and we have our examination machine kind of pictured as a box and we'll start putting stuff in it here in a minute. So when you image your evidence, you're going to put those images on a drive. A lot of times this drive will be external due to the just, due to the nature of how we image drives. However, it does not have to be. So in this case, I'm gonna show it external, but it could be put in internal. What I would recommend is if you're buying a new system, a new box, that you get a box that has hot swappable hard drive bays that can be accessed from outside the box. When you image, FTK Imager and other imaging programs will give you the option of segmenting your images. In fact, FTK allows you to determine the size of those segments as well. So the question is, should you segment? It just kind of depends on what you're doing. So one reason is you could be imaging to a FAT32 system. I wouldn't recommend that, but if you are, then you need to have a smaller segment size because you're limited to a two gigabyte file size. The advantages of not segmenting when going to XFAT or NTFS drives while imaging is that it's easy to copy, easy to manage. You only have one file. When choosing a segment size though, you should look at how big your image is. If you are imaging a couple terabytes and you're setting the default of 1.5 gigabytes as the chunk size, you're going to get a lot of segments and it is possible that FTK will not be able to successfully manage segments over a couple hundred segments. So adjust that segment size to keep it manageable. Okay, so how do we connect the evidence drive to our machine? Again, it could be an internal drive. That's totally cool. In fact, it's really good because you get good speeds. It's right there. If you are going external, I would recommend getting some sort of a toaster, an external hard drive bay. You want to be using USB 3 or 3.1 or eSATA, something with a high bus speed. You should not ever use USB 2.0. If that's all you have, that's all you have. But just realize that at USB 2.0 speeds, I have them up here on the screen. You can see you are taking a massive speed hit and it's just going to take a very long time. And this will be a massive bottleneck if your evidence is on a 2.0 hub. One thing to consider when using external as well is you want to adjust your device's power settings. First off, you do not want to have a turn off hard disk after a certain amount of time. And then also your USB settings, you want to disable the selective suspend setting so that if you are especially using USB 2.0, that the port is not turned off while processing. That will cause the processing job to fail when the device is either turned off by power settings or the port itself is disabled. Not a good thing to have to repeat all that time. Again, especially if you are on USB 2.0. So let's jump into our examination machine and we'll take a look at some of the drives and the way we can configure our install within our examination machine. So first off, you should really try to get solid state drives as they are the quickest or if you are going to go with spinning hard drives, you wanna start with 10,000 RPM drives if you can, just because they are the quickest. If you can't get 10,000, of course, there's 7,500, but you shouldn't go any lower than that. And you should avoid things like Western Digital Green drives as they are scaled down even more for power settings to be green. To start off, you're gonna need an operating system. Of course, FTK only operates on a Windows operating system, so you're gonna to have to have that on there. FTK has 
a couple components that make it run. It's designed for large data sets. And because of that, we have a processing engine. We also have a temp directory we need to manage and we have the database. Then of course we have the interface itself. We want to have these on different drives to maximize the IO of each disc. If you have some of these duplicated on the disc, we'll talk about it in a second, then a disc can either read or it can write. It can't read and write at the same time. And so let's say you're processing a case, the processor is going to access the evidence image, read the artifacts and process the metadata out of that. And then it's going to write it to the database. So if the database and the processing engine were on the same drive, the processing engine can be reading the evidence and loading that into the processing engine and swapping it with temp, but then it has to stop reading its stuff so that it can write that information to the database. You can see how that can bottleneck as you can only read or write at the same time. By putting the processing engine on one drive and the database on its own drive, then the processing engine can be reading and, and processing that information with the processor and then handing it off to the database to write its information simultaneously. The temp directory can reside on its own drive. It does not have to be a huge drive. A couple hundred gigabytes will be good enough. And again, the processing engine, when you're expanding things, when you're processing things, it will be dumping stuff into the temp directory as a temp holder for those files. Having the temp directory on its own drive especially separate from the processing engine will help speed things up greatly. If you have faster drives than other, the fastest drive should hold your database. Okay. The database is something that you're going to be using through the whole analysis process. Whereas the processing engine really only comes into play when you're processing, hence the name. Lastly, I like to put my case directories on their own drive. This is for a couple of reasons. First off, IO of the disk as you're working through your case, expanding items, those different types of things will be stored in the case directory. But also I like it on its own disk. So when that fills up, I can pull that disk and store it with my evidence disk. And so if cases are brought up months, years later, I can restore those cases back into FTK just by simply recovering that drive. And I have the evidence images as well. As I mentioned earlier, hot swap bays are your friend here because you can keep your case directories in an internal bay and swap them out very easily. All right. So with all these drives, what happens if something changes, like you turn off the machine, you've plugged in more devices. And when you boot it up, the drive letters and the paths are no longer the same. That's okay. In FTK, you can configure where evidence locations are in the add, remove, or manage evidence window. You can see up here where the path, it points to the location of the image, you can simply hit the three dots, change that and hit OK, and it will reassociate to your evidence. You can do this with the case folder directory as well. Now, what if you don't have a box and what if you don't have the budget to spread things out in this way? Can FTK still run? Yes. In fact, the basic installation option in FTK will actually dump all of the components on just the C drive by default. So invest in your storage speeds and your connections for your evidence images. It will save you time and thus saving money. You move through your backlog and more cases solved means more people helped and you're on your way. So hopefully this was some useful information on the install configuration of FTK. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.